no! So I have a check engine light on one of my trucks and the other truck, the air conditioning's not working. Luckily, this company, Topton, just sent me this auto scanner to try out. Let me see if this thing works. Let's see what it can do. All right, let's take a look inside the box and see what we get. Scanner, obviously, and a book. You may or may not want to read this. I scanned through it. You get a little cap to protect the end of the wire so the pins don't get bent, and a USB charger. When you first turn this thing on, it's going to ask you what language you speak. So you select your language, hit next, and then it's going to ask for your time zone. And it uses that for recording data and if you want to send an email. So it's good to go through this process just to get everything set up. And then you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi. Just select whatever your Wi-Fi is and click on it. Enter the password and you'll be connected to the Wi-Fi. Next thing it's going to do after you're connected to a Wi-Fi is it's going to give you any software updates that are available. Since this thing's brand new, it obviously needs to update to the most current versions of the software that are available. Just go ahead and download those. You also can update by vehicle manufacturer. You can select the ones you want to update. Just pick one or two and update those. I just selected all of them updated them and just let it run while I was letting it charge. When you have the scanner plugged into a vehicle, it's going to charge, so don't worry about that USB wire. To connect your scanner, you're just going to find your ODB2 port under your dash, plug it in, and then turn the key on for the vehicle and turn on the scanner. So I'm turning on the car here and you can see it says I need to change the oil which I've already done I just need to reset the oil filter life I'm in the maintenance section here and if you do a tune-up or change your air filter clean your mass airflow sensor anything like that it's a good idea to do a throttle relearn because the computer gets used to the way you drive the vehicle and the way it's been running so anytime you do any kind of tune-up things you should do a throttle relearn that way it will relearn what's going on with the vehicle and you should get a smoother idle and better miles per gallon but it's pretty simple to do with this scanner just tell it to go through the idle relearn set and then drive the car as normal and the computer will get used to how the vehicle is running once you've done a tune-up or something like that and to reset the oil, you just click the oil button in the maintenance thing and go ahead and enter the um, oil life reset for the GMs. It starts at 100% and counts down. I don't know what the other cars are, but I'm sure it's very similar. So you just select your vehicle, turn the key on, and click the button for software reset, and you'll get a screen that'll pop up and you just hit OK and type in 100% and it's pretty easy to reset the oil or you can go through the thing with turning the key on and off and stepping on the gas pedal or whatever it is for your vehicle. All right, so now let's see what we can do about this check engine light. Hit the diagnosis button, auto search, let it search for the VIN and this supposedly works for most cars. I didn't have any trouble with mine. I've tried this on three different vehicles, two GMs and a Hyundai, and it worked fine. Um, worst case scenario, you have to type the VIN in instead of letting it scan the VIN automatically. But it came up, 2015 Yukon, um, and then you just proceed from there once it loads the data. Um, there was different options for transmissions on this truck so once it finishes pulling in all the information i just have to tell it which transmission i have in the truck so it'll load the rest of the data i'll go ahead and hit the health report button and it will scan the computer checking all the systems letting me know what's working right and what's not. You can see the engine control module is red. That's because of the check engine light. 
and then it'll go through the rest of everything and tell you which systems you can check out on that vehicle. So this is pretty decent. It gives you the um, airbags, transmission, transfer case. So let's go to the engine control module where I have the problem. And in, this is where it's going to ask me what kind of transmission I have. I have a six speed, click that. And then I can go ahead, read the fault codes and see what they are. Display, I'll read the codes from the computer and it'll tell me what it is. Fuel trim system rich, bank one and two. So both sides of the engine are reading rich. So I have some kind of issue that's not related to a single cylinder. Then I can go back. And clear the fault code. It's, you sure? Yes. And go ahead and clear everything out. Everything's cleared out. Of course, this didn't fix the problem, but it did clear my fault code. Now everything's green, good to go. Now I am readiness is so you know if the vehicle is ready to pass inspection. So since I just cleared the fault codes, it's going to tell me that the car is not ready for inspection. This is good to know. It could save you a lot of hassle. Um, ready status of current driving period, which is what they'll check at DMV. And you'll see here fuel system not complete. Some of them are complete, some are not. But most of them are not complete because once you clear the check engine code, you have to drive the vehicle a couple of times for all these systems to reset. Now to get some more information about repair, I go back into auto search and let it do the VIN scan again. This is one thing that's a little frustrating about this. I haven't disconnected it from the vehicle. It should just remember this and I shouldn't have to scan it, but every time you go back in, it has to scan it again. Um, but it's a minor inconvenience. Once everything's loaded, I can go to system selection and I need to check out the engine control module. And again, I have to tell it which transmission and I have. And this is where you can read the data directly from the computer in real time. So I'm going to check engine data and just take a look at my oxygen sensors, see what they're reading. So on this particular truck, it has four oxygen sensors, one and two on both sides. So you just scroll through, you could see all the different settings that you can check out. So I'm just going to check all four of these so I can read the oxygen sensors on both sides of the engine. Hit OK and it'll start reading the data and it's giving me real-time readings of the oxygen sensors. I can hit the record button and this is a great feature if you're checking something out that you need to check while you're driving it. You don't have to worry about looking at the screen. You can just hit record and drive the vehicle and then when it's finished you can go back and view the report. So if you're doing something you need to check out while you're driving it when you're finished you just hit stop and it has the data streams saved. Um, this is really great. It'll ask you what the file name is. You click OK and it saves it right in the scanner itself. And to get back to these things, you go to the home page and from the home page you hit the RD folder and I only have one saved here, but you click the vehicle and you can look at the data record that you just saved bring it up. You can um, look at the sensors individually or just select all and you can view everything since it recorded it all in real time. And you can either graph it, do a combined chart, or look at the individual values. So I guess I'll just hit the combine button here and then you press the play button and it'll play back the data that it stored for you. So again, this is great for checking out something that you need to do while you're driving it or if you want to have someone else review the information, um, you have the data stored. Now I'm going to check out the truck that has the problem with the air conditioning. So I'm going to just let it uh, scan for the VIN just like I did before and let it pull up the information on this. 
Once it's finished scanning, you can bring up the information on the vehicle. This one's going to be a little bit different than the other one because the truck's a lot older and it doesn't have as many systems because this is a 2006. But the scanner still works fine on it and it pulls up all the data that's available on this vehicle. Do my health report, tell it what kind of transmission I have. Um, this, again, this is a base model truck, so um, doesn't the computer is not as sophisticated as it was in the 2015. So some of this information you have to tell the scanner what it has. It can't read all of this stuff directly from the computer. So here you see it's scanning the systems, just like on the other truck. And it's giving me green check marks, which is good. Just let it finish up and it tells me everything's good except the air conditioning's not working. So let's see what kind of information we can get about the air conditioning system here. Go into the powertrain, which is where the air conditioning is. Read the data stream, engine data display. I'm going to go into engine data 2, which is where most of the air conditioning information is on the computer in this vehicle. And I'm going to check all the things and then go into data stream. That way I can look at it all at one time and see what the computer is doing with the air conditioning. So I'll just select all of them that are available and hit OK. And it'll start getting the information for me. Truck's running, that's why the camera's shaking a little bit. And once it comes up, you can get the information from the pressure sensor. And the relay command is cycling on and off. So that lets me know that the computer is doing what it's supposed to do. It's not saying stay off all the time or stay on all the time. And I can hear the compressor cycling, so I'm most likely a little bit low in Freon. So I'm going to take a few minutes and charge this system up and then come back in and recheck everything. So I have the engine running and I'm just going to go ahead and open up my low pressure side and start adding some Freon. You can see it going in there in the sight glass. So must have some kind of small leak in this system, but I'll just add a little bit of Freon. This has some leak preventative in it. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. But as long as I can get the air conditioning working for now and see how everything goes from there. Now that I have it charged up, I'm hooking the scanner back up just to make sure everything's working okay. And I'll just go back and check those same four things again. It'll let me know everything's all right. I'll click OK. And let's see what happens. And here you can see everything's working the way it's supposed to. Nothing's cycling on and off. Looks like I'm good to go. I'll tell you what, overall, this thing is great. Um, I checked this morning. You can get this from Amazon for around 175. The price fluctuates. Sometimes they have a coupon. I'll put a link down below. 175 might seem like a lot of money, but what's it going to cost you to go to an auto repair place and get the codes read just for them to tell you what's wrong? I know you can go to an auto parts store and get it scanned for free, but all that's going to do is tell you what the code is. It's not going to allow you to take any readings from any of the sensors. So if you're a little bit more than the average DIY auto repair person, this is something you might want to have in your toolbox. I'm definitely glad I have it and I'll be getting a lot more use out of it. Thanks for watching.